You know, sometimes as bishop, it's nice to just take a walk through the neighborhood and kind of kind of get a feel for things. Let's see. Over there is Brother Burton's house. <laughs> He's quite a guy. And let's see. Over there? Now, that, that's where the Chavez family lives. And uh, Jim and Claire Campbell bought that little house over there about three months after he came home from the Korean War. You know, when I was called as bishop, I discovered that there were a lot of things that I just didn't know about these families. Well, for instance, Claire fell in love with Jim six weeks before he entered the service, wrote him more than 500 letters while he was overseas. After three years, Jim came home, and I guess if there ever was one, Claire and Jim had a happily ever after marriage. Claire always said he could make anyone smile. Two years ago, Jim passed away, and Claire lost interest in just about everything after that. She'd spend most of the day sitting by the window and wouldn't talk much. I never saw her smile. Wayne Burton worked in the old Clayson warehouse for three years. I never met anyone in my life who loved loading and unloading trucks the way he did. I know it sounds strange, but the thrill he got when loading the last pallet on a semi, he was a happy man. That is, until the warehouse ran into some tough times and had to close down the operation. Wayne looked around, but no one was hiring much. After a while, he just stopped looking. Brother and sister Chavez wanted more than anything to have a baby. They'd been married about six years. And although they'd sought the help of medical specialists, well, folks, they were unable to have children. In fact, they had almost given up hope. Congratulations. You're going to have a baby. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, thank you. About a month after they found out she was pregnant, Brother Chavez was injured in an accident and couldn't work. So what should have been one of the happiest times of their lives turned out to be a worry and a trial. Luckily, they had some food stored and that lasted them a while. But there were so many other expenses. The outlook was pretty bleak. So there I was, a new bishop, and trying to figure out how to help and counsel members faced with the challenges of unemployment, feelings of loneliness and uselessness, just struggling to make ends meet. As the Ward Welfare Committee pondered how to help these good families, an answer began to emerge. It was something I really hadn't considered before, Deseret Industries. The more familiar with Deseret Industries I became, the more I began to realize what a tremendous resource it could be to the members of my ward. Deseret Industries is part of the Lord's storehouse. The donations are available to help the poor and needy in the ward. Deseret Industries is a place of work and training. Thousands who find it difficult to get or keep a job enter training programs where they learn skills necessary to find employment. When Deseret Industries receives more donations than they can use in their stores, the excess goes to the Latter-day Saint Humanitarian Center where the clothing is sorted and shipped free of charge to needy people all around the world. As the Ward Welfare Committee began to look at Deseret Industries from a spiritual standpoint, I began to see new application in the scriptures. In the Doctrine and Covenants, the Lord commanded, Thou wilt remember the poor and consecrate of thy properties for their support. And inasmuch as ye impart of your substance unto the poor, ye will do it unto me. This is the way it has been in every dispensation of the world since the beginning of time. This is one way we approach Zion. Alma said of the saints of his day that, in their prosperous circumstances, they did not set their hearts upon riches. Therefore they were liberal to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, whether out of the church or in the church, having no respect to persons as to those who stood in need. When members went out of their way to clean and prepare things for Deseret Industries, they really felt good about what they had done. 
and it became a refining experience which taught principles of selflessness and compassion for others. You know, I've heard members say that it doesn't really make much difference where you give, but uh, they haven't seen what I've seen. When you give of your abundance to Deseret Industries, the things you give, they become sacred donations to the Lord. They're used to employ and train thousands of people, like Wayne Burton, give them skills that prepare them for jobs that can lead to an independent and fulfilling life. They're used to bless the lives of those in need, not just in your ward, but all over the world. Children of our Heavenly Father enjoy the blessings of your donations to Deseret Industries. And Sister Campbell? Well, she doesn't have time to be lonely anymore. She volunteers 30 hours a week teaching and training workers at Deseret Industries. And you know what? Claire discovered she has as much talent as her husband did in getting people to smile. When you give things to Deseret Industries, you're doing something good. You suck of the weak, you lift up the hands that hang down, and you strengthen the feeble knees. Some very nice things begin to happen when you donate your time and material possessions to Deseret Industries. And nice things begin to happen in other people's lives as well. <laughs>